So, you want to use WebEx meetings to teach online. Get ready for a really in-depth course. Uh, we needed this like last week, so can you make it under 12 minutes? What? Come on. Get ready for a crash course in the basic tools in WebEx meetings that you can use for engaging online classes. If this is a review for you, or if you want to skip my witty banter, you can go directly to specific topics by going to these times. You can also find this list of topics below, along with some helpful resources. Some of you might not like using WebEx to teach, and I get it. It takes time to learn to use technology. Also, if there's one thing we all know, if something can go wrong, it probably will go wrong. But think of WebEx as just like any other tool. It's just a different way to communicate with students and facilitate learning. So it's really not all that different from, say, a photocopier. Well, sort of. So as you explore new ways to teach, just remember, be patient with your students and be patient with yourself. Okay, let's start by looking at the basic controls. These are found on your screen at the bottom. If you don't see them right away, just click on your screen and they'll appear. When you click on this microphone, you will mute and unmute yourself. Clicking on this camera will stop and start your video. Note, if it is in red, that means you are mute or that your video is not showing. This button is for sharing content. And if you would like to see your participants, just click on this. This panel is active if the icon is blue. The chat button is also located right beside it. And the ellipsis icon shows you extra options. If you want to leave or end the meeting, click on the red X. Managing your students in an online class is just as important as in a face-to-face -face class. First, click on your screen to bring up your basic controls. Click on the participants icon. It will turn blue and you will see a list of your participants on the right. You can change the view of your participants by clicking on this icon in the top right. To mute a participant, click on the icon beside their name. It will turn red. To unmute them, click on it again. You can send a direct chat to any participant by clicking on the chat button. You can access more controls by right-clicking on their name. Here, you can take away or give them permissions to draw on your board, mute them, stop their video, move them to the lobby, or kick them out of your class. You can also access these controls from the participant menu at the top. Here, you can also choose to mute them upon their entry or find the meeting link to share with others. The chat tool is one of the best interactive tools. It's easy to use and you can get a lot of information and interactivity from it. To access this tool, click on your screen and click on the chat icon. It will turn blue and you can see the panel on your right. You can choose to message individual participants or to message everyone. You can also use the chat box to check comprehension, to ask discussion questions, or just to see if things are working properly. For example, you could ask or type, can you hear me? The whiteboard is an excellent tool for interactive activities. To set one up, click on your screen to bring up your basic controls. Click on the share icon, scroll to the bottom, and click share on new whiteboard. This will bring up a blank whiteboard. You can also access this from the share menu at the top. The whiteboard, move your mouse to the left of your screen. You will see 
icons for different kinds of tools, and it's worth it to experiment. Both you and your students can access these tools. You can write, you can draw, but you should be very careful when you erase. The eraser tool can be used by anyone who has annotation privileges, and people can erase what other people have created. Whiteboards can be used for many different kinds of interactive activities. You can use it as a polling activity where students circle items that they like more than others. You can use it for pronunciation, where you ask students to circle the word that they hear or the stressed syllable. You can also use it for brainstorming or group writing. When you're done with your whiteboard, you can click on this arrow to go to another activity or to delete it. You can also change the name. If you choose to delete it, please note that you can save the document for future use. Just click yes and you can save it on your computer. Polls are a great way to collect information from the students and also get them to participate. To start a poll, click on the ellipsis icon. Click on the polling icon and here you can edit and add new polls. Let's try a single answer multiple choice. Click New, type your question, press Enter to add your options, click Open Poll. Your participants will see the poll on the right. Close the poll and it will give everyone a few seconds to finish off. You can share the poll results with attendees by clicking here and then hitting Apply. Let's talk about sharing content. You might want to use a PowerPoint or a PDF presentation in the main window. To do this, click on File and Open and Share. From here, choose your document. Also note that these presentations will be flat. In other words, no animations. It may take some time for your presentation to upload, so try to do this a little bit in advance. To see the next pages, click on the grid. You can also annotate the slides by clicking on the squiggly icon. You will see your annotation tools to share a video. Click on your share icon, click on optimize for motion and video. Make sure that you're also sharing your computer audio. Choose the window where you've loaded your video. Click share. Here you will see your video and you can just press play and then click on stop sharing. This will bring you back to the main window. You can also transfer files directly to students' computers. You may want to use this if you want them to start on an assignment right away. To do this, click on File, Transfer, Share File, and then select the document you want to share. It will automatically pop up on your student's screen. Click on the X to close that dialog window. Sometimes it's necessary to share your meeting window with your students. This is particularly helpful if you want to help them access some of the tools. To do this, Click on Share and then click on Share My Meeting Window. Your students will see exactly what you see. When you're done, make sure to click on Stop Sharing. Another important feature is to record your meetings. This is helpful if you have students who are not able to attend or who want to review the material. To do this, find the recorder icon, click on it, and then click Record. Click on the recorder icon. From here, you can pause it, resume it, or stop it altogether. So, how do you keep your online learners engaged in a WebEx session? First of all, make use of your interactive tools. Ask questions in the chat. Give them polls. Let them annotate using the whiteboard tools. Pay attention to your presentation. Make sure that you're in a well-lit environment. It's best if the light is coming from the front rather than coming from the back. Try to keep a nice portrait. This means your head and your shoulders. Try not to be too close. Try not to be too far. Also, make eye contact. If you looked directly into your webcam, it looks like you are making eye contact with your students. Balance your interactive, reflective, and receptive activities. Don't spend your entire webinar just talking at your participants. Give them time to reflect Add ideas in the chat box or on whiteboards, or give them an assignment to do for a few minutes and come back and chat about it.
Sometimes you'll need to troubleshoot while in your webinar. Here are a few things you might expect to see. Number one, connection issues. This is a variable that sometimes we just can't control. If the internet is slow, the internet is slow. But there are a few tricks you can employ to try to make things a bit faster and smoother. First, get rid of all the bells and whistles. Turn off your videos. Mute all the microphones except for yours. Make sure that your PowerPoint presentations have small pictures or no pictures at all. You might have to forgo showing a video. Top trouble number two, the audio or the video isn't working. You can try to help students look at their settings. Maybe they've selected the wrong mic. If all else fails, have them use the chat box as their mode of communication. If that doesn't work, restart your computer. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. We hope it has been even a little bit helpful. If you want to learn more about how to use WebEx for teaching, check out the links in the description below.